is gleaning the people from among those who stand here on the earth in this generation. He's filling them up with all of His wonderful goodness and all of His glory. And He's teaching them how to walk in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake and how to be led by the Holy Ghost, how to move with the wind of the Spirit, how to flow in the rivers of divine power and grace so that He can have that mighty army that Joel talked about. They would rush on the cities. They would climb up the walls. Great is the army that carries out His word. They run like the horsemen. They bow their faces like lions. Uh, the Garden of Eden is before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. For a fire goes before them and consumes and brings in everything as a mincha or an offering by fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Takes men from the natural, physical, and transforms them into the reality of the eternal and spiritual. That's what the fire does. Takes and vaporizes the tangible and turns it into smoke and a vapor, as it were. That's not some existential concept of the living God and our interaction with Him. It just helps us to understand there are two worlds right now. There's a physical and a natural world and there's an unseen spiritual world. And our lives are caught up because of sin and darkness in a physical, tangible, visible world. But when we step over into this place of walking with the Holy Ghost, our eyes begin to be open and we understand that there is a whole nother realm. There is a whole nother universe that we've been unaware of. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, in Jesus' name, Father's here empowering you tonight. Tonight is not like any other night. Why is this night different from all other nights? Why is this night distinct from all other nights? Why tonight do we have unleavened bread? Why tonight do we sit here and eat with our clothes on and our feet with our shoes on and our staff in our hand? What's about tonight that's different from all other nights? Oh, this, going to, this night commemorates the great moving of God in our lives, the birthing of a, a brand new thing in the earth. Every meeting with God is an opportunity for you and I to step into the dimensions of all His fullness. That's what He's given us. All you have to do is hunger for this. And here's what I know. You can't hunger for something you, don't, you never tasted of. You can't thirst for anything you don't know about. So Father, it's purpose to have his wonderful, glorious Holy Ghost come. Knock on the door of your heart. Hallelujah. Pull the heartstrings of your affections. Call your eyes to be open. See Jesus. I see Jesus. Standing at the right hand of the Father. I see Jesus. Standing here. In our midst. I see Jesus standing in my inner man right now, and yours too. A life that's been given to us, so abundant, so amazing. Hallelujah. Isn't God so wonderful? Isn't He wonderful? Isn't He so wonderful? Father, I ask you to come in Jesus' name and reveal yourself to every person here in this place. Father, by your miracle power, I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, to do those things that only you can do. Do you know how much the Father loves you? Everything that Jesus did, all he was doing was doing what he saw the Father do. Every miracle he worked, he saw the Father work that miracle for me and you. Jesus came to die at Calvary's cross to please the Father for his Father's will. Jesus came and everything that he did was so exactly what revealed the Father. And he said to Philip, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. 
Jesus has come to reveal the Father to us. He's so amazing. He's so amazing. When you, when you live in Christ Jesus and you die in Christ Jesus, there's no fear there. There's only boldness and confidence. For that love is, that love is everything that we live for that we don't even know or understand that that is what we live for. But when we step over into that realm, suddenly we go, oh, I'm home. I'm home. Hallelujah. I'm home. This is where I belong. Father, I thank you right now. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Thank you right now. Everything changes. Everything changes. That where there was timidity, there becomes great boldness. Where, was, where there was only the sound of the voice of man, now the sound and the voice of heaven can be heard. Huh. Father, I thank you where there was once only a dry and thirsty land, now, God, there's rivers flowing forth. There where once was only the briar, there which was only those desert things growing, now grows up the great myrtle tree and the fir tree. Now grows up that great wonderful garden of Eden in their lives. In Jesus' name, in the name of the living God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you be made whole, your spirit. In your body, which belongs to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you that you're grazing up right here, not only in this place. Father, we know all over the world, in China and the Middle East, even in Saudi Arabia tonight and Iran tonight. You're raising up a mighty army. You have a company of people that you've handpicked to change the nations of this earth. And Father God, we thank you that you handpicked us. We thank you that we get to be in the number. We thank you, oh God, that we did not choose you. You chose us. And you ordained us to bring forth fruit. And the kind of fruit that you once seen in our life is that whatever we ask you, you do it. The people can see that we personally know you. Hallelujah. 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 One great man of God said, God took the rejects and made them the elects. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The, those that the world didn't want anything to do with or thought that, you know, just didn't fit in. Hallelujah. What God's going to do through your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to experiment? Just see. Just see. Just see. Tonight, I want you to be able to hear the Lord Jesus Christ telling you to go just like he told his 12 apostles to go. And their, their jaws were still dropping. They're, they just were walking around with bug-eyed going, my goodness, he just raised the dead. I can't even believe it. He commanded the wind and the wave. What matter man is this? Then he says, go raise the dead. And they're like, they've got to go out and test it out. Why? Because he kicked them out. He said, you've got to go. And he went everywhere with them. And he goes, he says, he says, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. <laughs> and he went everywhere with them, confirming his word with signs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, joyful, joyful, we adore you. Oh, God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts are yielded now before you. Responding to the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, joyful, joyful, we adore you. 
Hallelujah. Oh God of glory, Lord of love, our hearts are yielded now before you. Responding to Christ Jesus. Responding to Christ Jesus. Joyful, joyful, joyful. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, joyful, joyful, joyful. We praise you, Lord, joyfully. Hallelujah. 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 I will praise him. I will praise you. I'll praise the Lamb for sinners slain. I'll give him glory, all his people, for his blood has made us whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Tonight I ask you. Just before we get started, I, there are some people I don't really recognize. I want to know, if you stood before the Lord right now, would He say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant? Or would He say to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I do not know you. Tonight, if Christ Jesus came to you, would He look into your life and say, I'm so thankful that you on fire with the Holy Ghost. I'm so thank you, thankful that you've received this wonderful passion, this wonderful baptism in my presence, and you burn with my glory. I would say to you, you cold. You cold. You're not responsive to my spirit. You're not responsive to my word. That's the two, that's the two distinct places that the Lord Jesus said, I'd rather you be. To somebody who knows they backslid and know they're not right with God, they can get right quick. Should they be willing to hear his voice? Or oh, what he say to you? You look warm. You need the hot nor cold. You don't burn with a passion about anything. You're consumed with circumstances and situations. You're concerned, consumed with the cares of this life. You cannot bring forth any fruit to perfection. What would he say about you? I'm going to tell you what he say about me. You ready? He say, well done, my good and faithful servant. He say, I'm so happy you're on fire with my fire. You receive my baptism of glory. Hallelujah. And that you're burning with my will and my purposes in the earth. Amen. Amen. I want you to have that confidence too. God wants you to have that confidence. We don't want you to wonder. Why don't you want to stare in out in this space? We want you to know and believe what Christ Jesus has done. Take hold of it. And, and live it to the full because, oh, it's the greatest life that, that is a, could ever be imagined. It's the greatest life that's ever been given. It's far beyond just the life, a breath in the nostril to be a living soul. To now be sons of God, children of the Almighty God, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Somebody said, well, wait, 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 time out. Oh, how about the daughters? <laughs> daughters weren't lived out, left out. You just have to understand our whole identity, our whole right, our whole living before God is in the Son, Christ Jesus. God, God had a Son. Whether you male or female, you're on, you only exist in Jesus' Son. Are you listening to me? He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son does not have life. You know it. As my dear friends in Mexico say in South America, no exist they. It does not exist inside of Jesus. Oh, what men of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It, doesn't, it does not yet appear what we should be. What we are going to be. That glory that should be manifested in our life. Though we've received this wonderful glory now. 
It doesn't yet appear. But we know that when we stand before him and see him, we shall see him as he is. For we shall be like him. Amazing. Amazing. What an amazing grace. Whew. I pray in Jesus' name, you'll come to know how wonderful He is. You'll come to know Him personally, interactively. He won't be a God somewhere far, far away, but He'll be a living God walking with you, living in you, answering your prayers, visiting you in, your, in, in the night. Yes. In Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you. This holy communion. Living in Christ. This holy communion. Living in Christ. Drinking his blood. Eating his flesh. This abiding in Christ. Drinking his blood. Eating his flesh. This abiding in Christ, this holy communion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. We magnify your holy name. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We glorify your name. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. Holy is your name. Any words will work. Just worship him. Worship the Lord, oh, worship Him. <laughs> In spirit and truth, worship Jesus. Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I will praise the Lord. He gave me beauty. He gave me beauty, and I will praise the Lord. He gave me the oil of joy and the garment of praise. I have the beauty, the oil, and the garment of praise. Say, I got the beauty, got the oil, I got the garment of praise. I got the beauty, I got the oil. I got the garment of praise. Hey, I got the beauty. I got the oil. <laughs> got the garment of praise. Woohoo! Got the beauty. I got the oil. I got the garment of praise. Beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for morning. And a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness so that we might be the trees of righteousness, the glory of the Lord in the earth in these last days. Got the beauty, got the oil, got the garment of praise. <laughs> Come on, just shout to the, shout to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. God I say. Hallelujah. Manje kata ya shakadi ba ya lotoya. Woohoo! Maraba si reba kitana manje. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Praise God. Girls, just lift your hands towards heaven. Let the power of God come on you. Right now in Jesus' name. Last Dakota. Right now. Right now, I break every claim of hell and Satan. Right now in the name of Jesus. 
I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. The, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now, the power of God. The power of God comes on you right now. The power of God right there. There it is. Fire God. Fire God right there. Fire God. Fire God right there, Jacqueline. Hallelujah. Jacqueline. Hallelujah. Fire God right there. Sikata Moshitai. Miss Smith and Miss Neth, I want you to stand up and lay hands on these girls right here. Get over here, lay hands on these girls right here. Don't let the anything lay hands on these girls. They're getting distracted with certain things and we want them to grab a hold of the things of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I can't hear. Can you hear? Can you hear this? I can't hear this coming through the can you hear this coming through the Can you hear this? I can't hear it. There you go. See, Karamama said, turn it down, sir. I can hear it now. That's it. Well, Zone gave that. Turn it down, sir. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about right there. I'm talking about the fire of God. And I'm talking about the power and the glory of the living God. Hallelujah. That's beautiful right there. Now, listen. You listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. What's on Miss Smith and Miss Smith right there? The world, Satan and all the powers of hell hate it. There's no room for it in the school system. There's no room for it in the workplace. Oh, yeah, there is. The powers of darkness would try to invalidate the greatest glory, the most wonderful majesty and splendor, the most excellent power that exists. God's people, if they're not careful, they're going to go lock themselves in the sanctuary and hide for fear. Read Nehemiah chapter 6. There was letters sent to him by the various different enemies of God to try to cause fear within him. And they said, you better go. And one verse, one counselor said, you better go hide in the temple because they're going to kill you. He said, how can a man such as I run and hide for fear? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to stand right here and be who I am in God. And so is Miss Neth and Miss Smith. They're not going to be intimidated. Look, look, I see what happens. See what happens is Satan tries to dominate the classroom and push everything of God out so that then what takes place is the only real, real peer examples, the people that begin to be the ones that everybody begins to model their life after are those who, who, who Satan as it were, deifies. Yeah. Whether it's Hollywood, whether it's the star person, the party person or whatever. And then you watch the wondering eyes of the children that were supposed to be raised up in church get fascinated with what everybody else is calling good and wonderful. And we begin to lose them. Because some... Because... Because God's people who have the greatest power that exists in all the universe, the power of the name of Jesus Christ, the authority of the Holy Ghost, abdicate their authority. They abdicate the place that God has given to them to rule and reign with Him right now. You know, you look way back many years ago in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, 2,500 years ago, Well, actually, no, I'm sorry, 2,700 years ago. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he thought he was the absolute sovereign of the earth. He thought he could do anything. He thought he was God. And so the Lord sent him to eat grass like a beast of the field. And he discovered there in that state that God reigns in the kingdom of men. I believe in Daniel chapter 5, he says it three times. It is God that reigns in the kingdom of men. Now, if back then... God reigned in the kingdom of men when Satan still had more of a, so, uh, of a pseudo sovereign power over men. And I say pseudo false sovereignty that he claimed because of man's sin and rebellion. God never quit claiming men. Did you know that? Did you know that? God never quit claiming men. 
When Adam sinned and disobeyed God, Father came moving the spirit of the day. King James says in the cool of the day, but in the spirit of the day came moving with the, with the, with the, with the purpose, with the spirit. Was it walking? It's the hithel form of the verb halach in the Hebrew language, which means to move. It's a, it's a move, it's a dance. It's, it's a word, it's a verb that's used of movements, of dance movements, of, of war movements, but this is dance. Did you know Zephaniah 317 says he rejoices over us in the dance? <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you ever seen the Papa dance? Have you ever seen the Father get joyful? He, Father wouldn't fit into most churches because he's going he's gonna to move. He's got some moves. He's, got, he's rejoicing over us with joy. Hallelujah. He's singing. He's singing. This is my beloved. I'm the people of my heart. All his desires, Scripture says, are with the sons of men. To, that is an, a fascinating concept and thought. When all of a sudden you begin to walk with God and Father and you get personal with Him, you allow Him to get personal with you, you don't discover that He's got a bunch of accusations and condemnations and a list of complaints. Huh? He's not like an irritable wife. Forgive me, women. <laughs> or an irritable husband, too. I mean, you know. It just said the Bible, like, you know, talks about an irritable woman. Right? It's like a continuous drip. And I said, and so that's why now I'm just kind of springboarding off that. Please smile at me, ladies. <laughs> Father is really happy with us in Christ Jesus. If we're trusting in Jesus, he accepts no man's person. Men walked away and became separated. Christ Jesus died so that we might now live in Him, in the context of Him, abiding in who He is. He's all my righteousness. He's all my holiness. There is no holiness apart from Him. There is no life apart from Him. There's no righteousness apart from Him. Men want to try to be acceptable to God on their own. You can't be. We accept it in the beloved, Christ Jesus. And that should be very comforting. And he will, he will perfect everything that concerns you and me. Hallelujah. When you begin to let him love on you, and you love back, uh, and, 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 you, and you trip up and you fall into some kind of sin or disobedience, you, you, you're just brokenhearted over it because you don't want to displease your father. And he's just there standing, where, standing with arms out, wide open, loving on us, saying, no, 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 I'll teach you. Come here. Let me wash you. Let me cleanse you. Come here. Come here. And he makes our way perfect to where that we come to a place, place that, Lord, I never want to sin against you. Thy word, if I hid in my heart, that I never sin against you. Ah, that's relationship, you see. Father wants you to grow in this love. Satan would destroy people's lives. I've watched him destroy people's lives by the thousands. I've watched him as he tricked and deceived even great and mighty men. How are the mighty fallen? David sang the song concerning Saul and Jonathan in the mountains of Gilboa, which at one time was a fruitful place until David cursed it and said, you'll be a dry and empty, desolate place for the blood of the anointed has fallen upon your ground. Huh? That's what happened. And Gilboa is just a rock now, just a barren rock. Too many, too many people have lost their way. I pray in Jesus' name that none of the people here tonight lose their way. Hallelujah. Um, Father, Jesus says to the Father, Father, I thank you that you gave them to me. Now keep them through thine own name. That none will be lost on that day. Those that you have given to me. Uh, wow. To be kept by the power of God. You want to be kept? You're good to go. You want to be kept? Father's going to keep you. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Listen, I, wanna, I got a bunch of things I want to talk to you about. You know, the scripture says, though the vision tarry, it shall surely come to pass. 
And I know that sometimes people have had things that they've just believed God for. They read in the, the Bible, they were reading the Bible one day and a verse of Scripture jumped out at them and they, wow, you know, this is what I want to do, this is what I'm going to be, I know this is what God's purpose for me. Actually, you may not know this, but the Bible is a love letter to you. It is Father speaking directly to you. And when the Word of God becomes that to you and you begin to respond to the Word of God and the Word of God becomes living in you and it's not for information purposes only, but it's that which you live by, suddenly your senses are exercised to begin to hear His voice and to see His glory and the flow and the beauty and the authority of His heaven. Hallelujah. And um, it's one of the things that, you know, we're going to, we're going to be doing here. We're, going, we're getting ready to start uh, a school of the Spirit. Because everybody in here is supposed to be in the school of the Spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Ghost will teach you all things, John 14, 26. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mark 13, 11 says, it's not you that speaks, but the Holy Ghost who speaks from within you. Wow. I want people to be convinced of that. I want them to understand the context of that. I want everyone to get into the school of the Spirit and recognize that the Holy Ghost was, has come to lead us and guide us into all truth. He's come to take everything that belongs to the Father and show it to us. And there is, there is a wrong way to approach that and there is a right way. Hallelujah. We want to teach you the right way. We want to be able to help you, those of you who've... Um, Never in, you know, you've spoken in the heavenly language, but the, that heavenly language has never been interpreted. We want to show you how easy it is. We want to show you what happens when you come under pressure and self-consciousness. The anointing shuts down, and now you've got to make something up. I want to show you. There's many verses of Scripture that clearly elucidates these things for us. When people come under the pressure... Uh, the people are scattering like Saul did that day. The people were scattering. The Philistines were advancing. And Samuel, who was anointed to offer the sacrifice, had it showed up yet. So Saul overstepped his anointing under pressure and lost everything. And we helped to set limits and bounds for you. And just help you understand how to relax, how to come and rest in him. Amen. The more you relax, the easier it is to flow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was watching old Bubba Watson this afternoon. My goodness, he just got so wrapped up in pressure. He just missed the slightest, this easiest little putt. My goodness. I said, I need He's got a good message on holiness, Bubba Watson does, and living right. I need to go talk to him about flowing in the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit so he can relax. And the commentator said, yeah, when he's happy, he's on, but when he's sad, he's off. I'm like, that's a terrible testimony for the man of God. We need to talk to him. But I watch people that, they come under pressure. They come under pressure. I'm like, do I look like I'm under pressure? No. I'm not under pressure. <laughs> I'm not a, Listen, dear people, the Lord teaches us to come rest in Him. Woo! Huh. Cease from our own labors. Come just live over here in this place where He takes over. Where His peace that passes understanding, joy that is unspeakable. My goodness. Love. Wow. Love that passes knowledge. All I can do is just... Come over here and begin to allow him to fill you up with every good thing. There are enemies of that. There are enemies, sorrow, sadness, disappointment, discouragement. Listen to me. I want you to understand something. Every sadness and every sorrow in your life is a manifestation of an interest in something in this world. If, all your, if everything that you is important to you, everything that really matters is in Christ Jesus, you'd have unchanging joy because he's unchanging. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What happens when your children, what happens when your children are filled with the Holy Ghost? I am determined to see nursery, I am determined to see nursery ministry go to a place where people, there's enough adult human resources in there, right? Filled with the Holy Spirit resources to lay hands on kids to pray for them till they overwhelmed with divine power and glory as a little one. As a little one. And if I'm got to go into nursery and train people, I will. But I don't have to. All I need to do is teach you how to flow in the anointing. To where that your, your heart's not distracted with a screaming baby. Your heart's not distracted with a baby in pain. 
You're not trying to figure it out. You're not under, under pressure trying to get this thing fixed because pastor's going to hear the baby screaming and then he's going to think I don't have enough anointing. No. It's where your heart turns completely towards heaven and you don't even realize the baby's even screaming. You caught away in the glory. The baby goes to sleep. That's where ministry happens. I'm caught away into the realms of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking on His behalf. I'm not under pressure. I have no performance here. I have no results that I'm trying to gain. He alone brings the increase. I cannot step over the boundary. Understand me? Understand me? People think they bring the increase. They bring the increase. I'm not responsible for increase. You're not responsible for increase. We water. <coughs> we sow. We plant. But when Papa gives the increase. He gives the increase. It's his harvest. And he raises up laborers to go into his harvest. And he's raising you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's raising every one of you up. I'm just, I'm so blessed at what's going on. Thirteen years ago, we set our heart to get this property. Thirteen years ago, my sister broke the law for the first time in her life. She broke into this place. <laughs> Breaking an entry. Because there was nobody who had a key, no one she knew to get a hold of. And so she wanted to spy out the land because it was on her. It was on me. A dear friend of mine who's been used by the Lord and some, probably God took his name and scattered it throughout the earth. God used him in a, in a great way in the 90s to bring a revival to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, the Lord's going to give you this property. You pass by it all the time. And, 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 and this has been in your heart to get this property, the Lord's going to give it to you. He told me that 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Think about that. At this time, we had just stepped off of the Naval Training Center. The Lord had given us this amazing property. I mean, well, it was always going through these transitions, you know, where you think that, hey, look, it's all over. Everything's gone belly up. It's not working out. And, and at that time, you could either get discouraged or you could come and you can offer a sacrifice to the Lord. And you know what the sacrifice is that we offer? Our lives, the living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and say, Lord, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll be anything you want me to be. Nothing matters to me but you. I have nothing in this but your gain. That's it. And over and again, we've watched God do things so miraculously as we offered ourselves upon the altar of sacrifice and said, Your will, Lord. Your will. Lord, here's the altar. We built the altar. We've laid the wood in order. The offering is ready. Send you fire now. Uh -huh. And um, we banged on this door. We banged on this property. They wanted so much money for the place at the time, like 18 million bucks or whatever it was. I don't know. Just a lot of money. And I wasn't afraid of the money. People afraid of money. Money. 18 million. Then what happens when you think here, 18 million? Your mind goes to work. You start to figure out how to do it. You shut that down. Learn how to shut that down. And you'll also learn how to shut down the hindrances that keep you from flowing in signs, wonders, and miracles. Because the same thing happens. You know what I want to do? I want to become expert at raising the dead. But you don't become expert at raising the dead until you go practice raising the dead. You're never going to raise the dead sitting around and thinking about, oh, I want to raise the dead. Oh, you got to get up and go raise the dead, man. Huh? You got to participate with God because every time you begin to move in God, faith gets stronger. It's that way in healing. It's that way in miracles. It's that way in the gift of faith. It's that way in prophecy. It's that way in prayer. Do you remember the first prayer you prayed? If it was anything like me, it was pretty pathetic. You know what I'm saying? But now prayer gets stronger. You remember the first sermon you preached? I remember the first sermon I preached. It was not very good. <laughs> but the more I preach, the stronger it becomes. The more I pray, the stronger it becomes. The more I move in faith, the stronger it becomes. The more I lay hands on the sick, the stronger it becomes. Hallelujah. I learn how to participate. Faith grows and increases. And so this thing was shut down to us. And so... We, we miraculously, we bought a property about two blocks from here. 2008, we came back from Nepal. God used us to shake a nation. We had more than 30,000 people jammed into a stadium. It is a historical landmark in the church. Everybody talks about it in the nation. If you know somebody, somebody a Christian in Nepal, call them up and ask them about what happened in 2008. 
There, it's, it's, you find it on billboards. You find it on the internet. Some of it, a lot of it's not even associated with my name. They just talk about the Great Crusade, 2008. God took and did a, a work, a miraculous work in that nation where the national icon of Hinduism, which was their stadium, became a church for three days. And signs and wonders, miracles. As far as we know, every sign, wonder, and miracle except for the raising of the dead. I know that every sign, wonder, and miracle took place that you read about in the Bible. I know that. I do not know except for one, raising the dead. I don't know, but maybe somebody was raised from the dead. If they brought them, as far as I know, no one was raised from the dead. But every other miracle, sign, wonder happened. And it wasn't anything to do with us. It just had to other than we were willing to go because God announces his good tidings through us. God did more through my hello than he did through my sermon. <laughs> yeah, I just said, hello. I came in Jesus' name. They all came because it was advertised. And we were, had, had gone out and told people, bring the blind, the deaf, the cripple, bring the sick, bring the disease, bring the dead. They'll live again. All that was announced. The, the ambulance from the hospital came. People were brought in on cots. Just wonderful things. We said, if anyone wants to accept Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus is here to meet you today. You have to renounce every other God. You cannot bring any of your Hindu gods. You have to renounce them as nothing. Never had been done in the nation. It was illegal. You must renounce every Hindu god. They are no gods but devils. Ha <laughs> ha The whole stadium got up and ran to accept Jesus. It's on the, it's in, it's on the film. They got up and ran. I mean, there was, I mean, there was some up there in the stadium, some Orthodox Hindu holdouts. I don't know. All I could see is the people running. I couldn't see the people sitting. I saw all God was doing. Sometimes people see everything that, that God's not, seemingly God's not doing. It's like they see everybody who didn't get healed instead of seeing everybody who did get healed. What's wrong with that? What is going on with that? In a, in a place where there's 10,000 people and 1,000 get healed, how could you even think about the other 9,000 that didn't get healed? I'm captivated with the 1,000 that did get healed. We pray in Jesus' name that things begin to change about the attitude and disposition of God's people. Yes. And at any rate, I come back in 2008, and I was just, we bought the property over there, and the Lord has set things up. We thought that it was only going to be our multimedia center. And the number of things happened, choices people made, people had finances and things that, that would really have helped us at the time. They decided to do other things. And the Lord knows all that took place. But by the 2008, I'm like, I'm done with this. I don't have enough elbow room here. I left like 20, 30,000 square foot of building on the Naval Training Center. We're the only ministry on the Naval Training Center after Clinton had shut it down. Okay? We had the old Navy galley, the conference, big conference center, which still stands there on... That property, which is now pretty much marine housing, military housing. And the use of so much land. And the Lord told, I mean, Harold Bradison, they call him the prophet of the charismatic revival. Some people call him the father of the charismatic revival. He's dead now, but he came and says, Mark, the Lord's given you this whole property for a, for a dollar. You're going to take control of this property, all these things. But at any rate, in 2001, we, September 2001, we lost the property. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'll set you in a large, large place. I'll set you in a large, large place. And um, a number of things happened. We tried to move right onto this property. And we it just we couldn't. So 2008, I told everybody that was around me, I'm, we're going to sell this property. 2009, I was really into selling the property. Just waiting on the Lord. 2010, the people who had the mortgage on the property, I said, why don't you buy this? You guys got a portfolio. 
that can handle it. Why don't you buy this? Oh, we know where we're going to buy it. Lost 50% in the crash and whatnot. 2011 goes by. 2012, they say, we may be interested in buying this property. 2013 said, okay, we'll buy the property from you. I'm saying, oh, good. We're even, right? We're even, we're clear. Yeah, we're even. We're going to take it. So the day that it closed, in es the day that the escrow opened, and they gave us the notice that we're moving out of this property, suddenly the door opened to this property. 13 years. 13 years. You can get faint. You can grow weary. You can say, oh, it didn't happen. You can come up with all these things. You can choose to believe other things. You know, along the way, there are opportunities to believe a whole host of different things about your relationship with God, about what God's going to do with your life. But if you hold fast to the vision, if you hold fast to divine purpose, if you hold fast to greatness in God, it's going to happen. What do you want to happen? What, is you, what, what do you want to happen? It's going to happen. Huh? Do you have a bigger plan for yourself than God has for you? God's got a great gigantic plan for your life. You know that? Huh? Anybody know that? Does anybody believe that? Yes. Can you tell me what the plan is? That you step into all the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus. That's God's plan for your life. John 4, 13. I mean, forgive me. Ephesians 4, 13. I want to go to John 4. I'm getting ready to go to John 4. I just got reminded. <laughs> and now, here we are. Miraculously, we stepped into this. We had to fight a battle for a couple of months. A number of things were going on. And you guys labored and worked so desperately hard. I praise God for those of you who labored to constantly set up the equipment over there in the hotel that was a lot of work, constantly shutting it up, constantly tearing it down, giving yourself to the work of the kingdom. My goodness. I'm dead, dead, dead. There is, a, there is a, a purchase, as it were, of great boldness in the faith through that kind of participating with the things of the Spirit. And you know, there was a number of places along the way that I was strongly tempted. Well, let me just go ahead and take the pressure off and get a building because, you know, they, these, these guys over here, they were telling, we heard everything you could imagine about why we couldn't get in here. We're here now. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 What is it that you're going to believe? What is it that you're going to believe about your relationship with the Lord, about the things God's going to do in your life? Huh? You know what I'm going to believe? I'm going to believe what the Bible says. Amen. I'm going to take it for the full account of that which it describes. I'm not going to dilute it. I'm not going to make it something bigger and better for someone else. I'm going to make the full grandiose glory of it all apply to my life. Amen. And that's what I'm going to believe for myself. And I pray in Jesus' name you believe that for yourself. Amen. 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 And if you will, God will build you up. Hallelujah. And he'll give you an inheritance among all the saints in light. Hallelujah. Paul said to the church at Ephesus, in Acts chapter 21, I commend you under the word and under the Holy Ghost, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are saints in light. Holy ones. Hallelujah. And so this, uh, this is the flight simulator room. <laughs> For PSA. And I, I think it's pretty, I think that's a pretty good allegory. That this would be a flight simulation for you for a little while. Taking flight in the things of the Spirit. Taking flight in the things of God. To mount up with wings and zoar. Amen. Run, not be weary. Amen. <laughs> Walk and not be faint. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Soaring around in the Holy Ghost. Soaring around, soaring around high above the storms of life. Where it cannot touch you. Cannot touch you. Nothing. I will let nothing touch me in my emotions and in my passions but the Holy Ghost. Only He, only the Lord has access to those affections. World cares earthly things. 
have no access to me. Material things, you have no access to me. I have the true riches. Hallelujah. 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 So, right across the parking lot there, there's a building that's about 35,000 square feet. And we can stuff about 2,500 people in it. And that's exactly what we're going for. The Lord has given me faith to go after the lost. So we're going to start training people in the things that the Lord has shown us. We've got have faith to go after the lost. I'm not talking about have faith to go after other church people. Get him over here. A faith to go after the lost, especially the radical lost. Those the really bad, bad, bad lost. There's 3.2 million people in this county. 3.2. A tithe, 10%. That's huge. That's huge. 320,000 people. I believe that God in his glorious, wonderful love for the lost and dying world in this city is about to reveal an unprecedented, glorious manifestation of his power and grace. And I, for one, have offered myself to participate in this. I have built an altar. If you've known me for any years, I've been saying these things for many, many years. I'm here. I'm at a day. I'm at an hour. So are you. And we're going to do a school of evangelism. We're going to do a school of missions. As I said, the school of the spirit. We're going to do a school of music. Father's given us an incredible company of people and resources. Joe and Becky said to me yesterday, and Joe's sister, Joe, their whole family is, is, is church worship, church music, family. Joe's sister does the worship for Joel Steen, which is the biggest church in the United States of America right now. And Joe's and Beck here, you know who they are. They just committed to flowing in the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost music. And, um, you know, they said, look, we'll just come and just help and build this thing. And so we're praying about how much, how much they're going to come and participate. Tuesday night, this Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, we're going to get together and we're going to have a round table discussion about the various different things that God showed us uh, uh, that we're going to do. And we want everybody who wants to participate, wants to help, wants to be a resource to help us do these things to bring in the harvest. We want you to come because we want you to hear what's going on. We want to hear any things that the Lord's ideas, concerns that the Lord's laid on your heart. And come labor together with us. Come on, let's just do this. Because it, it's right now, it's the light of His grace is shining. Soon, the darkness will come. Soon. And we must work while it is day. Because the night comes when no man can work. That's what Jesus said. There's a time coming. No man can work. There's a terrible day coming and approaching. It ultimately finds its great expression in what's called the tribulation. It's described in Revelation chapter 4 through 19, really through, through the end of 18. Described by many in the prophets. But there's a lot of turmoil that will happen even before that. A lot of crisis and things will happen before that. I believe that God would give to us the power and the ability build something right here on this property that belongs not to a man, not to denomination, not to an organization, but is dedicated to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ until Jesus comes. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that faith will strike the hearts of every person in here and they'd be really excited about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I really do believe that, that praise and shout precedes faith. Precedes the work of grace. 
I first saw it when God taught Jehoshaphat how to overthrow his enemies. Well, he, the prophet came really and just took Jehoshaphat and said, think about what happened in the days of Jericho. Really? That's what I would have done if I was the prophet. I know it's not written that way, but that's if I was the prophet, that's what I would have done. Because he was really teaching them what went on in the days of Jericho when God just took his people, said, walk around that mighty nation that built that great fortress, that great city where they had these amazing chariot races across the top of the wall. Walk around it. I'm going to bring the wall down when you shout and praise me. Ha <laughs> ha. He tells Joseph, that, just go shout and praise. Take your, get rid of your sword and your shield. Go shout and praise. I'll destroy your enemies before your face. People underestimate the power of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. They, underest they underestimate the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. You start, pro you start saying the name of Jesus over yourself, you get happy. <laughs> you will. Saying that Jesus Christ is Lord is the spirit of prophecy. It is. To say it with the authority of heaven, wherein the name of Jesus, that is a name that is above every name, that every knee must bow to, that every tongue must confess, it breaks off the strong holds and it breaks off the yokes. There's no greater anointing than the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why Peter said in Acts chapter 3 and verse 16, it is by his name, the faith that is in his name, that has made this man every bit whole. All they said is silver and gold by none. I do not have earthly riches, but I have the heavenly riches in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're going to teach you in the school of evangelism how to use the name. Too many people walk up to other folks and they want to talk about all kinds of things in the name of evangelism. No, it's Jesus. It's just Jesus. Huh? It's about your soul. It's about bringing people to a place of recognizing how much God loves them and how that Jesus is the one who purchased their salvation. Purchased. He's purchased your salvation. Do you accept it or reject it? That's the fundamental question. And the Lord gives us the grace and the ability to apply it to each individual person's life. <coughs> Hallelujah. And it's in that context that he will confirm his word. I don't want any working. I'm not interested in being another counterfeit of Chris Angel. Yeah. A Christian counterpart to Chris Angel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The deceiver. Are you listening to me? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I want to know nothing but Jesus and him crucified. I'm a minister and preach Jesus and him crucified. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare his word. I'm going to, there's, no more, there's nothing more powerful than his word in declaring his scripture and saying what he said. He will confirm his word with miracles. I only want signs and wonders and miracles that come as a result of Jesus confirming his word. And that's the things we're going to teach you in school of evangelism. Now, of course, there will be overlap, school of evangelism and the school of the spirit. And then the school of missions is not only about missions that God has opened up for us in the nations of the world. I just was invited into Mongolia and through a great network of ministries there, they, they have a, they've done an amazing thing through South Korea over the years in Mongolia. I mean, there's just like, what nation do you want to go to? We know someone there. We'd be happy to send you. Huh? but we want you to go like Jesus said for you to go. We want you to go with this gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. This gospel of the kingdom should be preached as a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. The gospel of the kingdom like Jesus preached. Amen. Amen. The way he did it, the way he sent the disciples to do it, and the 70 others also, and then the 120, and then anybody who would believe. I believe one of the most important scriptures that people need to get a hold of is John 14, 12. If anyone, I mean, that is wide open. Forget about all that people say is something that belonged for the apostles of the first century. Give me a break. Listen to what Jesus said. Forget about what that other person said. They didn't have a scripture in the Bible. This is what Jesus said. It's about Jesus. He said, if anyone believes on me, these works shall they do in greater works than these. I mean, he defined what those works were. 
is the works that he saw the Father do that he talked about in John 5, 19 and 20. Hallelujah. It's the works that he described and declared in Matthew chapter 11, verse 3, when John sent some of his disciples to see if he was the Christ or should we look for another. In the, at that same time, at that same moment, there uh, the crippled walked, huh, the diseased, the lepers were cured, the blind saw, the deaf heard, and the dead were raised to life again. Right there, that's just in one single meeting. That's a Jesus meeting. That's church. That's what church is supposed to look like. That's what it's got to look like. I won't have no other way. I'll not stop. I'll give him any rest. I'll give you any rest either. <laughs> the other church looks just like the ministry of Jesus, for that is what is defined to be. The church, in essence, is defined to be the person of Christ Jesus. I'm not going to stand by and watch as religion has stolen the glory of Christ Jesus from the kingdom. Or the power of darkness to come and shame and defame his name. Ah, no. I'm in, I'm in it. To win it. And it's not by the arm of flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Hallelujah. Powerful name of Jesus. The powerful weapon of praise. The powerful weapon of prayer. I'm believing God to raise up prayer warriors in this place. People who know how to pray and enter into supplication. I'm not talking about any flag waving weirdness. I'm talking about get on your face and cry out to God to shake heaven. It's like the, like the old Methodists used to say, cry for the glory to come down and pray and, and seek God till the glory comes down. Then rise up and stand in the glory. That works. Praying for the fire of God to fall upon the city. Where are the people of prayer that know about the wind of prevailing prayer? Where are the people of prayer that have been taught to pray? Like Mark chapter 11, 23 and 24 says, Jesus said concerning prayer, right there, he said, if you stand praying, when you believe that whatever you've asked, you've received it, it's yours. You see, with a little bit of faith, you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and whatever you say, it should come to pass. It's radical stuff. That the Lord has given us the opportunity to participate with. Huh? Isn't that amazing? You've been practicing that? You believe that? Huh? What if 13 years pass? Huh? What are you going to do? I'm going to be like the widow. She said... She said, Luke chapter 18. Of course, I know you know this. I know I don't have to be quoting these verses of Scripture to you or telling you the reference. Just quote them because you know where these things are. And if you don't, we're going to encourage you to get to the place. But <clears throat> Jesus said, Luke chapter 18, said this is why men ought to pray and not to faint. Look at the widow. She just came continually knocking on the door, asking the judge, wearying the judge. Oh, no, the widow's back. <laughs> she's placing a demand. I tell you right now, I've got to have this. You don't understand. I've been taking advantage of. You're going to have to rise up on my behalf and do justice for me. Uh -huh. Here she comes again. Uh -huh. And though he has no regard for man, nor does he fear God, yet he will grant to her her request because of her continual coming. He swings the pendulum because he did said in contrast to how much more shall our heavenly Father who love us give good things to us. If we've been evil now give good gifts to our children, how much more shall our heavenly Father give to us the kingdom? Amen. You know what the kingdom looks like? Jesus said, if I work miracles and cast out devils by the Spirit, the kingdom of God has come to you. You know what? That's Matthew 12, 28. I love that verse of Scripture. Powerful revelation. And Romans chapter 14, verse 17. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Wow! The kingdom. Kingdom. I'll give you the kingdom. It's my good, it's Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It's Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't be discouraged. 
Don't weary in well-doing. You shall reap if you do not faint. Huh? There's a possibility of fainting. Huh? There's a possibility of where is the promise? Look at Abraham. I promise you this. You will not have to go through more than the children of Israel did. <laughs> Step into your inheritance. In fact, the Lord has made it really easy. He's made it a way. He's made a way to where you can and I can be changed in a moment. In an instant, in the twinkling of an eye. And then he's left, uh, he's left it wide open how quickly we grow and mature. If we just be willing to just, on, at the initial, just walk away from it all. To leave everything. To leave it all. And go follow Jesus. Go sell all that you have. And give it to the poor. And come follow me. Wow. Wait a minute. We need to think about this. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat. Take no thought for your life. What you shall wear. Three times Jesus said it. Matthew chapter 6. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus alone knows the beginning from the end. He alone is the beginning from the end. You and I walk one step at a time. You need to know what's going to happen in the future? I'll tell you what's going to happen in the future. You're going to die and go to heaven. Okay? That's what's going to happen in the future. Between now and then, you just walk one step at a time with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Now, I will open up a second option. You may not die and go to heaven, but you may hear the trump. He may, you may hear when he descends with a shout of an archangel. Amen. The voice, the trumpet, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to meet him there. Hallelujah. In a moment, in an instant, in twinkling of an eye. Change. Woo! You don't have time to think about it. You don't even have time to think about it. 1986, it was actually 1985. I didn't realize it, but we had uh, set our alarm clock for 3 o'clock in the morning. And it so happened to be on a classical station. And the thing went off. And it went off with all these trumpets. It's just trumpets. And I'm like, receive, I woke up, receive my spirit, oh Lord. And realize this, and I realize, you know, oh, well, it's the alarm clock. I was extremely disappointed, but it's going to happen quickly, people. It's going to happen fast. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'd, I'd like for that to happen right now. I, 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 I live for the day to see him face to face. I live for the day to see him in all of his glory and splendor. The Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus allowed Paul to see him in all of his glory and splendor, and he went blind because the eyeballs couldn't handle it. Huh? He went blind. Praise God for Ananias. Amen. Spoke the word of faith and he got his sight back. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, Lushati Galat. Strong that day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What miracle do you need? The miracle worker's here. <laughs> Ha. The miracle worker, Jesus, he's saved yesterday, today, forever. He's here right now. He'll heal you. He'll heal you inside and heal you outside. In a moment, in an instant, twinkling mind. All you have to do is believe. Two blind men came to Jesus and said, Lord, that we may receive our sight. He said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said, yes, Lord. He said, be healed. Tonight, the Lord asks you, Whatever it is that you have need of. Do you be, he says the same thing today. He's not changed. He looks at you and I and says, do you believe I'm able to do it? You've been asking the Lord for things. He said, do you believe I'm able to do it? And all you need to do is have enough wisdom and insight to recognize, yes, Lord, you're able. We're certain about you. 
We believe the things that you've done. We've not made you something different than you described yourself to be. Praise the name of Jesus. I want you to open your Bibles with me, please, for just a few minutes. And uh, I, I want you, as, I'm, uh, as you're turning in the pages of your Bible, to John chapter 4, I want you to begin to consider that whatever problem, whatever situation, whatever need you have, physical, material, financial, whatever it is, spiritual, that right now, Christ Jesus is here to work a miracle for you. He is the miracle worker. He is the Savior. He is my Savior. He comes, He's not only saved me from the power of Satan, from the power of demon spirits, from the power of deception. He comes and saves me continually from any mess I find myself in. I mean, when you live... Somebody asked me about divine health. I found a place of living in divine health where you don't get sick. And somebody said, well, you, 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 you mean you never get sick? No, I don't get sick. My body gets attacked with sickness. A, a virus will try to start working on me. But I've just learned how to tell the virus to leave. Uh, other things will try to afflict me. A, a, Ruthiana got around someone that got such a terrible state of strep throat or something, they had to go slice his throat open. The guy couldn't even breathe anymore. And then the thing tries to hit her. And, um, you know, praise God, she knows how to stand up and say, go from me, rather than run, get some penicillin. <laughs> oh, you don't know, man, you got to take care of that strep throat, get right down in your heart. My God, you die. <laughs> Fear. 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 Fear hath torment. Faith can't work in that realm. Faith works by love. Perfect love casts out the fear. So I say, you say, we're not supposed to go to the doctor. No, go to the doctor if that's what you need to do. I'm just telling you, you're spending your money for that which will not profit. You don't need to do that. Christologus said in the second century, and then we praise God for him saying it, and it's still in the volumes of of. The, the, the literature that we still have to this day, extant literature. He said, why do you go spend your money to get yourself healed by doctors when the Lord has already given it to you for free? Did not our Lord say, these signs shall follow them that believe? In my name you'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpent. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. If you lay your hands on the sick, they shall recover. It's our greatest evidence that Mark 16, 17 is absolutely belongs in the Bible. Of course, I already had the evidence. Some people need some other evidence. You know, I could have just taken you over and, and shown you all those same things in the life of the disciples. Just read through the book of Acts, show you Philip do the same thing, you know, in Acts chapter 8. Show you Paul do the same thing in, uh, what is it, Acts chapter uh, 24 or 25. He shook the serpent off into the fire and felt no harm at the isle, on the island of Melitas. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Huh? I mean, listen. This is the light of the world, walking in this glory of God, walking in a place where you don't have fear. Where you don't have fear. You're ready to go. I'm ready to leave this place. My, I'm being protected and kept by the power of God. Nothing can happen to me except for Father allows it. No man has power over me unless Father gives him the power over me. Listen to me. How about living the life of Jesus? How about not living your own life, but living the life that is described in Jesus? That means to follow Jesus. That means to live the life of Jesus. So many people say they live the life of Jesus. So many say they follow Jesus, and it's a different Jesus. How about let's do what he did? How about say what he said, believe what he commended? Come on. Are you with me? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, everybody be excited about this privilege and opportunity of living out your life right now. If he did it, then we're supposed to do it and greater things than these. You're going to have to keep, you're going to have to learn. You're going to walk in this divine health, you walk in this glory. There's some practical things you've got to learn. You've got to learn to keep your lips 
from speaking evil in your tongue that it speaks no guile. Lips from speaking any kind of wrong things about anybody else. Talking bad about anyone for any reason. There is never, it's never a justifiable for any reason to be an aggressor and an accuser. That is the work of Satan, never the work of the Holy Ghost. He's an intercessor and comforter. He's the one who brings peace and reconciliation. That's the context where the Lord says his eyes are upon the righteous, but his face is against them to do wicked. You know how he describes righteousness and wickedness there in Psalms 34 and also Paul or Peter uses it in the first epistle of Peter? You know what he's describing righteousness being? Those who pursue peace and speak no evil against anyone. You know what he's calling the wicked? He's not calling the adulterers wicked there, although the wicked adulterers are wicked. He's saying those who speak evil with their tongue have something bad to say about someone else. They are the wicked. My face is against them. Relationship's big to God. Relationship is big to Father. It's not big to you and me because we've been too... Well, it's big to you and me. It's not big to man because we've been too influenced by the satanic realm. But it's big to Father. He doesn't break relationship. He doesn't break covenant. And aren't you glad? He loves forever. He's friend forever. Isn't that wonderful? He doesn't change. He's immutable, unchanging. Dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, neither has any man ever seen. And now he's called you and me to come live in that realm. To walk in the light as he is in the light. Then if we have a relationship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. People want to have broken relationships and have the blood cleanse them. Listen, people, I want to comfort some of you, there are unreconcilable problems that occur where people do not want to stop accusing you and stop attacking you. They don't want you around. This, that's a different situation. But fathers, there are situations where people just walk away. They do not want to reconcile with father. How are you understanding what I'm saying? Reality of it is, his Father wants you and I to come begin to participate with his love and understand the beauty of relationship among ourselves. Forget about these exceptions. Just get over here into relationship and keep our hearts right where we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's how we're supposed to interact with the world around us. That's not talking about the household of faith. It's not. Because Jesus uses this context. He said there was a man who fell in the hands of thieves who stripped him and left and, and wounded him and left him for dead. A priest came by and got over on the other side of the road. That guy's a mess. Who knows what his problem is? Levi came by, walked, walked on the other side of the road, didn't do anything. Samaritan came, saw the guy in distress, picked him up, took care of him. Huh? And he's describing who the neighbor was. The, your neighbor is anybody you come in contact with, in other words, in the world. That's your neighbor. Your neighbor's the guy who's blowing the horn going down I-5. Ah! Behind you. And you're not doing anything. You're just trying to go down the road <laughs> at the speed limit. And then the horn is going off. You're trying to get in the right-hand lane because you must exit in the mile. And nobody wants to let you in. Just your neighbors. <laughs> and God says, love thy neighbor. I tell myself all this time. I'm like, I'm in a, I'm in a, in a, in a store the other day. And, and was giving, I was being given a very hard time. It's going off in my head. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. It keeps my spirit right. See, I'm letting the word of God rule me. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. His word, if I hid in my heart, then I might not sin against him. And then he adds to that, love your enemies. Huh. You've heard it said in the law, love your neighbors and hate your enemy. Jesus said, I said, love your enemies and do good to them who persecute you. Yeah. That's Matthew chapter 5. If you and I started living Matthew 5, 6, and 7, a light would shine so bright in the midst of a perverse and crooked world. If the church would just start, church among themselves would light, start living Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it would be a radical revival. You hold the key as to whether or not you're going to participate with that. 
You can talk about all the bad problems and all the hypocrites and all the issues around the world. But it still comes down to the point, are you going to, what are you going to participate with? Hallelujah. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. Are you in, are you in John 4? Let me get a bigger Bible. I want to preach. From a big Bible. The red letter edition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> My eyes fall on these scriptures and I, and I just like every one of them. We could preach an hour on. And I've got, I can't look at them. This is chapter four is rich, you know. Every chapter in the Bible is rich. Somebody said, how can you preach every night? I'm like, do you know how many words there is in the Bible? I got enough material for the rest of my life. John chapter 4. Verse 46. So Jesus came into Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water and the wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him, that he would come down and heal his son. You know, I believe that if you and I would set our hearts on the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to do what Jesus told us to do, to pray for the sick, to cast out devils, to command the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and we would stay at it, uh, there, would, there would ultimately become such a percentage of people getting ill that the rumor would fill San Diego and they would start coming to see... Uh, this, this Jesus Christ of Nazareth that uh, they came to see in the, in the time 2,000 years ago in the time the Bible was written, they would start coming to see him now and there would be a faith already risen up in the heart that, so, so that they would be prepared to receive. So I read this in the context of not what Jesus did a long time ago, but what Jesus wants to do right here tonight. What Jesus wants to fill your heart with concerning what He will do tonight. What He will do for the rest of your life. What you can count on Him to be towards you in whatever circumstance, life, you find yourself in. Where there's some kind of distress financial, he'll be a savior. He'll come and he'll bring the remedy. He'll bring the supply. He knows the fish to catch. He knows how to bring divine provision to find sickness. Jesus is here. <laughs> you know how that I, 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 I want to say this because I, I didn't say it a few minutes ago. Just come back to it. The Lord remind me. You know how to stay healed, stay in, in divine health? Stay in the anointing. You stay in worship and praise. and You stay in participation with God. You participate with what God says to do and you're going to find yourself in the anointing. You participate with telling people about God's love for them and preaching to them, declaring to them the good news that their life was under a death sentence but Christ Jesus came to save them. Good news. Christ Jesus has come to give you every good thing that pertains to life and godliness. You participate with God in the gospel. You participate with the Holy Ghost in preaching the gospel. And you're going to find yourself uh, participating with the realm of divine power and anointing. You lay hands on the sick. You're going to find yourself participating in the anointing. And when you're walking in that realm, I'm telling you, sickness, disease can't hold you. Sin has no power over you. You participate with walking around just hugging on people, loving them smiling at them, saying it's so good to see you. You're participating with love. Love will become more tangible, more manifested in your life. The love of Father. A love <laughs> that goes beyond all knowledge. These are the things that we want to do. These are the things that the Christ Jesus wants to do through our lives. In verse 48, Jesus said, 
Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Some people think that that's like Jesus is all upset. And that he's somehow, you know, speaking some derogatory statement. Ah, oh, here's God, he wants a sign and want a miracle. It's not what he's saying. That's not in him. He's come to seek and save that which is lost. He's come as the healer. He's come as, he's come as the provider for all of our needs. He's come as the express image of the Father, showing forth this love to deliver us from everything of sin and shame and sickness and disease to the powers of darkness to try to lay upon mankind. And it should be enough evidence by all the things that he did and said. No one could ever believe that. And so then the man says again, he says to him, verse 49. And the noble man said to him again, said, sir. He didn't even say, didn't even say Lord. He said, sir, he treated him like a prophet. Sir, he didn't even call him rabbi. Sir, come down to my house. My child's going to die. That's pretty radical, isn't it? Jesus loved the radical. He loved the people who placed a demand. Weren't just, you know, kind of, well, uh, be thy will. Uh, I know if you're too busy, I can understand. I know I don't really count, and I don't want to trouble you, but if you get an opportunity, huh? It's a Syrophoenician woman. Her daughter was possessed of the devil. Jesus couldn't get rid of her. He says, come. My daughter is grievously tormented of a devil. Come. Heal her. She says, not right for me to give the children's bread to the dogs. Call the woman a dog. Huh? You're not going back to that church. There's not enough love there. I went up there. I don't know that call me a dog. <laughs> See, healing is the children's bread. Yes, it is. It's the children's bread. It's always been the children's bread. Covenant children's bread. In the Old Testament, it was children's bread. Forget not all of his benefits. He heals all your diseases, cleanses all of your iniquities. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Don't forget. A lot of people have forgotten. It's children's bread. Amen. Amen. And the Lord's going to make sure we eat good. Yes. Hallelujah. That's going to be some good bread. Yes. Hallelujah. My wife got a bread maker there for a while, and I started gaining some weight. <laughs> I said, babe, we're going to have to get rid of this thing. <laughs> it's adding to my life things that I do not want added. <laughs> we want them subtracted. He gets good bread. Healing It's my bread. That's my food. It's my daily bread. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yes, Lord, this is true. Yes, yes. This is what the Syrophoenician woman said. Yes, Lord, it's true. But the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I'm ready to have a crumb. Just a little crumb would do. He says, woman, you're going to get whatever you want. There's a boldness there. There's a confidence there. There's an unwillingness to receive a no. Jesus didn't say no, but it's closest time he ever said no. Closest time he ever said no. Huh? But the woman wouldn't take a no. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Yes. Sir, come down, lest my child die. He didn't say with all due respect. <laughs> May I please petition you one more time? I know you're busy, man. Forget all of that nonsense. Sir! My child's going to die. When you get, look, when you love your children, which every father does, there's an earnestness in your heart. There's a, a demand that you place upon the anointing. What does Jesus say? Jesus responds to him and says, go your way, your son lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Ha, ha. And so what happens is the man then goes to his house. He inquires at what time his son recovered. Discovers that it was the exact same time that Jesus said, your son lives. And look what happens. So the father knew that it was the same hour. Verse 53, look at it. Jesus said, without miracles, without signs and wonders, you will not believe. Right? He's prophesying what's going to happen to these people. What's going to happen to his house. Are you looking at verse 53? When he finally understood, it was at the same moment of time... In which Jesus said, go thy way. He was saved. He gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was saved. And his whole household, look at that. In the same hour, Jesus said unto him, and they, he said, thy son liveth. He himself believed in his whole house. I am confident that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to present him to the world as though he is here right now doing exactly the same thing he did then. That's absolutely the commission that we've been given. I stood the other day in Tokyo, in a city of 28 million people, and looked at how... The world dominated the men's life. They're a free society. And by and large, it's one of the most unreached people groups I've ever been to. 2,000 churches there in that city. 30, an average of 30 people in each church. And I said, Lord, you look very weak here. Lord, there looks like there's very little power and evidence of who you are in this place. What's going on? Surely your name has been proclaimed here in this free society. What's happening? I mean, I determined I'm going to go back and tell every evangelist that I know. Maybe they don't know. I got back and found out that the, uh, all the evangelists I know understand it. I mean, I started telling one man of God. He said, yeah, I was there. He said, he started giving me the statistics. He said, yeah, this is how it is. He said, I had a great burden in 1995 for it, but God told me to go to America and stay in America. And the Lord whispered to me in the morning, early in the morning, he said to me personally, he quoted the scripture. He said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. I'm looking for someone to believe. I have all authority in heaven and earth. He says, Matthew 28, 18, the next thing he says, go in my name. So fundamentally, he's saying, I'm looking for somebody to believe. And I started rising up. I knew that God had sent me to Japan. I had no idea what I was going to encounter. That I was going to encounter the most unreached people group that I had ever imagined to see in a free society. Because the churches that are there, it's not Japanese in the churches. It's Koreans and Filipinos and foreigners. In those churches. It's rare to find a Japanese in the church. I have people watching me from Japan tonight. On the web. They, you know, write them. They'll tell you. Go see for yourself. And what the Lord did when he was talking to me about Tokyo. And, and that just, this faith just rose up in me for Tokyo. The same kind of faith began to rise up in me for San Diego. Satan truly believes that he owns this place and he can decide what's going to happen. That he can control the people of God in this place. He can stop praise. He can stop faith. He can confine those who do believe to a powerless religion. No. God doesn't need a whole company of people. He just needs one person to believe. He's proven that over and over again. He just needs one man or one woman who will stand up and believe. I used to think that it needed to be more. I don't think that way anymore. The Lord changed me. He said, to forget about it. Look to me. Forget about it. Just look to me. I know that the Lord wants a glorious church. And I'm purposed. I purpose my heart to be a part of a company of people that are so full of faith that every one of them 
look and act just like those that were there, the 120 on the day of Pentecost, that everybody knows how to pray, that everybody knows how to flow in the Holy Ghost, that everybody's been baptized in the wonderful works of Jesus Christ, that everyone is moving forward in this wonderful thing called the advancement of the kingdom of God. But the Lord only needs one person to believe. I'm telling you, listen to me. You are right now witnessing the beginning of a great move of the Spirit of God in the city. You're right now, you're witnessing. You're witnessing. Ruth Anna says, Elizabeth, you better get your camera and you better start taking pictures right now. Because this, in documenting what's going on, because this is going to be history. You watch what takes place. See, there is the knowing after the Spirit, and then there's the reasoning and the thinking and the hope realm of men. The reasoning and the hoping, the think realm, uh, thinking realm of men is all based upon experience. And it's weighted with bad experience. It's all, thing, it's all based upon the logic and a, a progress of, uh, uh, of events. It's not so with God. Revelation causes you and I, the spirit of wisdom and revelation causes you and I to step into the realms of our inheritance and to begin to move in the exceeding greatness of His power. It's a whole new way of thinking. Hallelujah. 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 Jonathan Edwards, Evan Roberts, history speckled with people like this. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Catherine Kuhlman, others stood up in a faith realm and watched the fire of God fall upon their generation. Reinhard Bonnke, he's about, he's making a transition, you know. He's run really hard for most of his 50 years. God did through him things that had never been done in the history of men. And right now, he's so focused and, and so aware of a generation that is ready to rise up in great power and authority that moves in an unprecedented expression of relationship with the Lord. I, I, I hope you can feel that. I hope you can sense that. I, I hope you realize what I realize. I was with Reinhardt and I said to Reinhardt, I said, Reinhardt, please come to our area. He said, you there. I don't need to come. I said, well, just lay your hands on me. He said, you really don't need me to. I said, it's true. He went and laid his hands on me anyway. I needed help. I was staying in a terrible place with him in Nigeria. I can say the same thing about most of you. You don't have any idea the power that has been made available to you. <laughs> The Father wants to open your eyes to give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him so that you can see <laughs> what's been made available to you, the riches of His inheritance in you. You could understand it maybe a little bit better if it said the riches of our inheritance in Him. But He didn't say that. He said the riches of His inheritance in us. Hmm. in the mata. You were created in Christ Jesus. To live as his witnesses. To walk around with his authority. To demonstrate his goodness and of his love. Hallelujah. You have to get out of your mind. You think too much like a man. The only way you're going to think like God. I want you to think. Start living by the word of God. Get rid of your suspicion and calculation. Huh? And try and have greatness for yourself. Huh? 
You seek great things for yourself, seek them not. That's what Jeremiah said to Baruch. Huh? Because God sought them for you already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know how easy it is to move and get to prophecy? You know how easy it is to work, move? It's natural. And try. Just like, ta just like talking to anybody else about anything that you know. Hey, did you hear what they said about the weather in the Midwest today? It's just the same way. Fire of God. Fire of God. It's the God of I'm going to come by and lay hands on you. Whatever your problem is, God solve it. Whatever your need is, the Lord Jesus is here to meet it. If you have sickness in your disease, or disease in your body, it must depart out of your body in Jesus' name. The glory of His presence is here right now to touch you and change you. You've got to want to be changed, though. Hallelujah. Some people are very satisfied with the way they are. Huh? They're legends in their own mind. <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus, that comes to an end. <laughs> You're getting a hunger and thirst after the things of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shake out a manga day. Shake out a manga dasateratai. Lai pikurungi stikaya. Likarash lor mastaya. Mandola bara stipera day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this anointing. Thank you, Father God, for this divine power and glory. Prophesy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Seglando. Manjaleste. Ha ha. Mumbrosti kiliana shap. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles, son. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Your identity is in nothing else but the call of God upon your life. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Your identity is about nothing but doing the master's will. Doing the will of the father. Following in obedience as a servant. To go out everywhere. <laughs> declaring this good news of the gospel, laying hands on the sick, commanding the blind to see, the deaf to hear. Hallelujah. Fire God right there. Strengthened in Jesus' name. <laughs> hey, if there's any time you'll be able to accept the fire, God's went so cold. Marisataya. Bang le castle. Ming Ling de Peristai. Hallelujah. If I spit on you, my name is Spitzbergen and Sikala Manaya in the Nola Pere. Nine. The fire of God. Saint Lama. The fire of the mighty signs and wonders of the Spirit. Sitiko Romasatai. Zito Lama. Father, thank you for the anointing right now. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Sikara Sarabapa. Frene Sila Pai. Sutu Sinangleha. Eresaya. Ye pronza, ye take it out. Boldness, boldness, boldness. All fear goes from you in Jesus' name. Boldness and confidence. Boldness and assurance. Boldness in Jesus. Father, thank you for the anointing. It increases. It increases in Jesus' name. It is supplied to a hungry and thirsty soul. That person who wants change. Who wants, Father, I thank you for the anointing. Thank you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A fire God comes upon your life. Right now in the name of the living God. To burn out. To burn up everything that doesn't belong. In a relationship with him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now the fire God comes on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jacob. Ha. Soto. He sha. Soto. Si la na. Ha ha. Mahala ha. Mahana bosta. Meng lengdo. Yifra satala. Ha. Bo. Lights. 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 Lights shining in a dark place. Lights. Lights. Lights shine. You shall not be ashamed. No. 
No, but you shall boldly proclaim this wonderful works of divine power and grace. <laughs> oh, you will not be subdued, but be the subduer in Jesus' name. So I'm blown to tie. Now, I know your identity in Jesus Christ. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. And I love so to ribaya le shapro papa pati ara boso paganai. Ele mound bay. Hallelujah. Rabba baba baba sabri papa pitefre. Right now in Jesus' name. Rabba baba sa the fire of God poured your life. Zita to pain. Pefrasta tiling pay. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. By God. Right now in the name of the living God. Glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are His. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. E che demando se prata hai. Zotu nenglang dong brangeka. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus mighty name, the outpouring of the spirit of the living God right through your life in Jesus name. Basto toko ripa. Ivra basoto remengeste pai. Everto menandere se. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The risa, the fire. The, the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. Mamrasatai upon your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, you back off. I destroy your work right now in Jesus' name. I render you powerless right now. Every power of deception, every work of a lie, it cannot function in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing on. Hallelujah. On Gabriel, Asatai, Apakal Shokine, Hallelujah, on Miles, Hallelujah, on Junior, Ha Ha Ha, Ha Ha, Mama, Yisheli Bati Yarosuya, Oh, Hallelujah, Fi A Rosopai, Efiranando, Ushiela Kiki, the fire of God right there. Ha 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 Irupra, is food, mima, is everything. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the anointing. In Jesus' name. Don't you think of yourself as a mere human being? No. No, you've been born of the Spirit. You've been washed in the blood. You've been filled with the glory of God. You've got a divine assignment. Do the work of the ministry in a Masataya. Now, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire. The fire of the living God. A heavenly vision. Hallelujah. A heavenly vision and name of the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation on you to be able to see. Right now. Right now. Healed. Filled. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The fire of God upon this family. The fire of the presence of Jesus upon this family. In the name of Jesus. In the uh, signs and wonders, people. In Amando, miracle working, power of God, people. Nande Mrushata. Hallelujah. Irastekla. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Anastate. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, Fela Kopatara Stiri. Hallelujah. Mandeira. Receive me now, yeah. Receive Taya. Receive it all, Stay. Receive it, Mangle. Receive it, Ostatora. Manamang Jerapa. Ephra changed. Hallelujah. Filled up with this glory from above. <laughs> Filled up with this glory from above. Right now, in Jesus' name. Now, fire God. Eshikar. Fire of God. Right now, in Jesus' name. In the name of the living God. Change. Testicle. Now, blossipa to Ishtipala. Ha ha. 
There is the talk in the main list. See, Paul, see, there is the thing in the In Jesus' name. Fire of God, right there. Mount Jacob changed in Jesus' name. Filled up with heaven. Hallelujah. Right a stack it daily. Right now in the mighty name of the living God. Fire God on your life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Whatever you need, receive right now. Whatever you need, receive right now. Right now. Ha, ha, ha. Name long signs and wonders, people. Those folks who lay hands on the sick and they recover. Ha, ha. Those folks who speak and it comes to pass. Fire God. Hallelujah, fire God, hallelujah, fire God, hallelujah, fire God, Manziti, fire God, Manziti, <laughs> right now in Jesus' name, <laughs> hallelujah, 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 Nanjo Seko Taye. When we stand there before the throne of grace, all that matters is what we've done in running this race. The Lord will not be impressed with any earthly accomplishments, but only those things that are done for heaven will last. Now, Father, I thank you right now for many souls. Many souls. Many souls. Many. 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 Now, in Jesus' name, I erase everything of the past that goes from you right now. Everything in the past goes from you. It goes. You do not have a past. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what the Lord says to us. He says, you do not have a past. I have eliminated it. I have eliminated it. There is no charge of sin or wrongdoing against you. Hallelujah. You have no past. You have a present and a future. Hallelujah. Fire God. Father, I thank you for increasing the anointing. Increase the anointing right here. And increase the anointing right here. Increase the anointing right here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Increase the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I call the fire of God down on your son. On, in the name of Jesus. Call fire God down on Zachary right now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's a code of master to you. Ha, hallelujah. Fei, it brass to tell Fire, lo so token aste. Monday, le perosoro. Monday, le bebe, it cutara. La, the dora, say, te bea. Loco, manande, lo so te negashi. La, among lo. Hallelujah. Fire God right there. Yeah. It's fire God right there. See, so go, name. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of prophecy. Thank you for the anointing. Right now, in Jesus' name. 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 Right now, in right now, right now, Ishte. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, Monzelakeya. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. How are you doing, baby? How are you doing? You doing good? It's good to see you. You want to come up here and say hi to everybody? Huh? Do you? Come, come go for a walk with me. Come go for a walk. Let's walk over here. Come, I want you to, I want you to, I want, I want a few people to see you. See this baby? See, baby was born blind. Baby was born blind. And, and lots of doctor evidence for that. Baby has perfect vision. Because baby was in the meeting. And I, walked, I didn't even touch her. Just said, she's, you're fine. Hallelujah. We touched you. Anything, something didn't happen to you? Huh? If, you don't, if it's doubt and unbelief, then nothing happened to you. Something happened to you. Something happened to her. She's glad, she, she's, glad she's in a church. Holy Ghost Church, where they believe Amen. that Jesus is saving us today, today, forever, that he opens the eyes of the blind, cause the deaf to hear him to speak. Because otherwise she would be having a little cane. Huh? We just like to walk around, show up God's little miracles. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord Jesus is going to do greater things. He did greater things. He did greater things. 
He's going to do greater things through her life. Paul and Vicky's going to keep her in church, keep kids in church. I feel the anointing right here. The fire of God. No one has a purpose for you like Jesus. So many times, many well-meaning people try to give you an identity in other things, academics, athletics, other walks of life. There's no real meaning or value in your life compared to that meaning and that value which is imparted to us by Christ Jesus where we are allowed to go everywhere and preach this gospel and be the representatives of the will of the Father divine grace proof providers hallelujah people around you telling you God doesn't exist I'm telling you there's 600 million people like me that's plenty of evidence I'm a data point that cannot be denied. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm evidence of who Christ Jesus is. And I'm here to destroy all the works of Satan in the name of Jesus. To destroy the power of the enemy that comes to try to afflict and torment your mind. Afflict and torment your body. You need to live another day in fear. You need not live another day in fear. Not another day in indecision. Lift up your voice and begin to rejoice in God. Begin to seek His face. Wherever you go, your children will follow. Don't lead them down the wrong path. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire God on you right now. Fire God on you right now, JJ. A blessing of the Lord. Command a blessing on you right now. Command a blessing on you, Faith. Command a blessing on you, Randy, right now. Rise up in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Rise up. In the name of Jesus, I call the fire of God down upon your life, Jonathan. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call the fire of God down upon this family. In the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Right now. Be filled. Right now, in Jesus' name. Be filled to overflowing. Be filled. With his mighty presence. Be filled with his glory divine. Be filled right now in Jesus' name with faith. Be filled right now among Zonda. Filled right now in Jesus' Kirishi. Filled. Masele Kara Sata Dang Lanai. Filled. Masikili Mingaros to tell you. Filled in Jesus' name. Overflowing with this glory. With rivers of living water. With rivers of living water flowing. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled in Jesus' name. Everybody stand with me. Be filled in Jesus' name. 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 Every flu and sickness and virus, every pain, every affliction is gone. It's gone from you. I tell you, it is not there. Check. Check yourself. Check yourself. It's not there. It's not there. Fever's gone. Pain's gone. Affliction's gone. It's not there. It's gone. Ha. Hallelujah. Ha. Ha ha. Ah, just shout to the Lord. <laughs> now. You want to increase the power and the presence of Jesus Christ in your life? Yes. Obey Him. Amen. Obey Him. Start cooperate with Him. Participate with Him. It's not hard. Love on people. It's not hard. Pursue peace with people. 
It's not hard. Tell people about the goodness of God. Tell people about the love of Jesus. Go bless somebody in Jesus' name. Go tell them that God loves them so much that He gave His only begotten Son. I'm telling you, that word will not return void because it's the Word of God. Go tell them that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything about their life would become different at that moment that you were talking to them. Go tell them. You'll see the power and the glory of God. Increased in your life. Find those after you've just told them about the goodness of God and the love of Jesus Christ that are sick. Lay hands on them. Command the pain to go out of the body, the sickness and the disease to depart. Watch what happens. If you preach the word, if you preach the word of life, which is a message of a power and the ability to, be, to repent and be changed, Jesus is going to work a miracle. If you don't plaster the name of Jesus all over it, no miracle is going to happen. It's not going to happen. Miracles happen in the name of Jesus for the glory of Christ Jesus. And that's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm trying to come camo through the back door. Forget about that, man. Jesus is not in camo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, he doesn't want a disguise. He doesn't need no back door. Hallelujah. Uh, he's going to confront you face to face. To live in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kishat Ganani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus says, 
that when you bear fruit, as a result of abiding in Him, the branch abiding in the vine, drawing our life from Him, you, there you're going to bear fruit. The fruit of relationship with God will be evidenced in your life. He says, and then I'll prune you. Some people will say, I like that branch. I thought it had a good shape. I'm cutting it back, says the Lord. I'm cutting that back. I'm cutting that off. It might have been good. It's a, it's a part of the branch. But it just had little old teeny fruit. And didn't wasn't able to really have the strength to bear up the fruit the Father wants you to once produced in your life. And so long as that's there, the big fruit, the increase of fruit can't come. Rejoice in the prunings. Somebody said, can you describe pruning? Yeah, it's cut, a cut, something's getting cut off. <laughs> so you might have not liked that getting cut off. You might as well just learn how to start rejoicing in the Lord in all things. Begin, I say rejoice. Rejoice. And give thanks in all things. Because Father's right in the midst of working in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'll just wait a few more minutes. Just waiting. The Lord has tongues, interpretations of tongues. As prophecies, as revelations, exhortations. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Gina. Come here. What's happening with you? Huh? Did you know that you're in the fire? Did you know you're in a refiner's fire? Did you know that, did you know that Jesus said that he sits as a refiner's fire in a fuller's soap to refine the sons of the priest? And you and I have been made, made priests and kings. Christ Jesus is our high priest. We've been made priests and kings. We've been made a royal priesthood. And he's refining us. The old can't go with us into the new. The former things can't go with us into the things that the Father has for us now to step into. Amen. Amen. And Father, I thank you that this is Las do say. Hallelujah. Quiero estar la quina casa de. Bato y recite. Bato de recite este can. Lengle que carosto con quina cate. De mana sete. Hallelujah. Now, Father, Gina so wants to function in the word of knowledge. And I ask you to show her how. I ask you, Lord, to show her how to begin to pronounce your name and the simplicity of the gospel that brings change to the lives of those that she goes out looking for. Father, I pray now that everything about her life gets baptized in the glory of that wonderful realm of the spirit of holiness that you've given. Zokalaya, irastuturatita, malange kota astepreti. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now just receive. Just receive. Just receive right now. Receive. Receive. La mamma do brete. Receive. La mamma rosucate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. O rasa te galimnast. Gabriel, come here. Come stand here. 
Lift your hands towards heaven. Gene, don't go anywhere. You're not done. Toko kina kete kina kata akte. Este kalakte. Malaga de ke iste. Lenga lega leve de. La da mando za de. La lo bara sa da da de. Ekse kutaya. Leya de ya da ya de ya ba ya. De ya ba ya de. De ya ba ya de ya. De ya ba ya de ya. Se ya da ya to ka ine ke ke linga. Ekalana se de glingo rustoya. Hallelujah. The Lord's rewriting everything about you. Huh? He's writing, he's rewriting it all. Huh? Huh? He said, well, I like that branch. I thought that was a very cool looking little branch right there. You cutting it off? Yep, it's cutting off, cutting it off. <laughs> I'm cutting that off too. And then, and yeah, it's going to get a fruit. You know, when you see that first pruning, it is looks terrible. It's like, that doesn't even look like it's alive. It's, everything's all stuffed back. It used to look good. It had all kinds of talents and possibilities. Now it's all pruned back. But see, see, what happens is there are many things that, that come into our life that the Lord can use as a stepping stone but it isn't what he has to develop us in. It isn't what exactly the way it's supposed to work. So it has to be cut back. It has to be removed. So if we're going to go ahead and if we're going to move forward with the Lord and the things that he has for us, then we just take our lives and we present it to him. And, he, and we say, okay, Lord, go ahead and break me. Go ahead and melt me. Go ahead and mold me. See, go ahead and fill me. We just do it like so many that we've looked at in the past have done it. As Jesus showed us in his walk with the Father, in, in, in his love of spending time with the Father, where he prayed all night and then worked all day. Just being immersed in this personal relationship with the Lord where we hear his voice, we see the Father do the work so that we can do it. Hallelujah. People don't know this. Many people don't know this. But the great miracles seen in A.A. Allen's meetings, A.A. Allen knew who was going to get healed before he ever went out into the meeting. What he did was he had everybody write out cards of what was wrong with them. And then he went in to a place, into a private chamber with the Lord and talked with the Lord about it. Because he had learned to fellowship with the Lord. He learned to talk with the Lord. And hear what the Lord say. And so the Lord, he would reach, he'd be looking through the cards, looking through the cards, just looking through them, reading them. And then all of a sudden, this one, laid it over there. Looking through the cards. This one, looked at it. One of them would be someone just brought from the mental institution, totally demon-possessed. That one's getting healed. This one, person is born blind. That person is going to get healed. So he'd go out and he'd say, tonight the blind are going to see. And those who are mentally ill and diseased are going to be delivered. And so he went after those he already knew was going to be healed. And then he left it wide open for the Lord to heal anybody else who would just believe in the context of the meeting. One of the things that we want to do, listen, I'm, I am determined there be no mixture in my life. I only want the flow of the Holy Ghost. That's it. I, I only want to participate in those things that will draw people to the man, Christ Jesus. Yes. That is it. Hallelujah. And so I am determined to participate with that that the Holy Ghost is doing in my life so that that becomes a reality. And then we're going to do that together. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go after that provision and that growth and that maturity that comes through participating with God in the way that He has defined it in His Word. And then what we're going to end up with in our growth and maturity are His full manifested results. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Anybody else with any sickness or pain in your body at all right now? Anyone? Any, anyone right now? Any, anybody here? You have a need that you, need, you want to bring to Jesus. I want you to come right here. Robin, what's wrong? I just have really bad back pain. Okay, well, back pain goes from you right now. <laughs> Is it back pain caused by baby? Probably. And doing too okay. much. Okay. <laughs> oh, doing too much? <laughs> baby, reposition yourself for mom's sake right now. Hallelujah. Hakatai. Layanasada. <laughs> but there goes the back pain. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> She's happy. Turn this up. Turn it, can you turn this microphone up for me? And you know... People say, well, I want to understand what the joy of the Lord is. He says, the, full, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And he's given us joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want to understand what that joy is. What happens if the Lord touches you so you can understand what that joy is so then you can live in that joy all the time? What happens? What does that look like? Huh? Somebody says, but that's really strange. I don't want to know what the joy is like that. I want to know how the joy is in another way. Well, what is it that the way that she would like to learn how to function and flow in joy? What is your particular preference? For me, it's just like, Lord, have it your way. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand's pleasures forevermore. I want all of it. I ask for all of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone in here? I'm just starting to get a little drunk right now. Scripture says, don't be drunk with wine wearing his excess, but be drunk in the Holy Ghost. So, that's what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Is there anyone in here? You really, you just aren't certain. You just have a doubt as to whether or not you could go tomorrow, tell somebody about Jesus, and then have enough faith in Christ Jesus to see a miracle power of God go to work in their life. Through you. Does anyone have a doubt? You're just concerned? Well, I just don't know that I have the gift. I'll ask you, do you have the giver? Do you have the giver? Yes. The giver is Christ Jesus. Do you have the giver? Yes. If you have the giver, I'm certain you have the gift. Yes. It's available to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Really what happens is the Lord just gives us whatever we need for the situation. Huh? Yeah, he's like the caddy, Holy Ghost, in some respects. I pull out the pitching... Wedge, he goes, no, 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 give me that, you sand, sandwich. <laughs> now, don't hit it like that, no, no, look at the grain of the grass there. No. Open up the face. He coaches us. <laughs> Looks at us, tells, tells, relax, relax, don't force it. <laughs> it's true. I'm just going to use a golf game. How many of you know things about golf? The hardest game on the face of the earth, my goodness. And you got to flow with it. You try to force it, nothing happens. Nothing happens. It won't work. Same way in the Holy Ghost. I see people get under pressure. They try to force it. It ain't going to happen. I want you to be certain tonight that you can go everywhere tomorrow preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to be certain tonight that the Lord will give you divine appointments. Yeah. And that you're not going to be in imposition, imposing on anyone. But you're actually going to be blessing them. God wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. You do not want to see yourself in an eternity without God. And you surely don't want to see your neighbor there then either. The Lord will give you divine appointments. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus Christ that every one of you have divine appointments. That every situation you find yourself in tomorrow... 
it is you see it as the Lord ordered your footsteps and brought that person into your life so that you could tell them that Christ Jesus loves them and died for them so that they might live in him. The simple gospel message. Jesus Christ came and loves, God loves them so much, Jesus Christ came, died for them so that they might live in him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the day to the Monday. I presati in a gata satulila perasolitaya. Perishata bakilisiti rimana satiti. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is here. Christ Jesus is here. He's the creator of the heavens. He's the creator of the earth. And he's here right now. Jesus is here. <laughs> Daniel and Amy. You do not see yourself as anything other than those who God has called out to represent Him in the earth. Amen. Your pursuit is for nothing other than reaching the lost, yes. preaching the gospel, and following Jesus wherever He would take you. That's it. That's it. The rest of it, Whatever, don't you let anybody put it on you. It's not your identity. Amen. It's not your purpose. Amen. You can occupy with the little jobs God gives you, Amen. but it's just a little job. It has no real value Amen. or meaning. It's not your life. Amen. I say that to all of you, but I'm especially saying it to my son, to his wife, because of the call of God that is upon them. To go everywhere preaching the gospel. Yes. Signs, wonders, and miracles. And you're going to start preaching more. In Amastakili Mantaraste. Right here in this place. Around this place. Amen. The, Lord, the things that the Lord shows you to do, you guys are going to do it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mangjelikikarastabodanepate. <laughs> Hallelujah. There, right, right now, we're working on four different attributes to, to uh, the School of Evangelism. One of them is street evangelism. And uh, that's already really gotten started. And, and uh, Adam and Gina and, and uh, Kelly and Kate and others have been participating in that. And if you want to be a part of that, that is... That's awesome. You need to. There are other dimensions of evangelism as well that uh, we're going to be helping you understand that you can be involved in. But we want everybody to get involved. Because if you start doing something, you're going to get so excited about it because of the participation with the Holy Ghost, the overwhelming glory that you experience when you begin to participate with what he's doing. That's where you begin to become more aware of his presence, become more influenced by his presence. To where it's such a glory you can hardly stand or talk. Amen. Amen. It's true. All these good things. Jesus said, I write these things unto you that you join may be full. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. See, the fear that you had and the intimidation that you had to, to represent Jesus is the fear and the intimidation that kept the flow of the gifts of the Spirit from operating through your life. That fear is gone. <laughs> you've been empowered. You've got a right. You, you've got a liberation. It's our, it just took place. It's like the psalmist said, I woke up with your likeness. 
I just woke up and it was different. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your wonderful ministry, where you come and baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you, Jesus. For your wonderful grace that has brought us into this place right now where we can know you and represent you, live in you, and walk with you. Thank you, mighty God. What a great salvation. What a great salvation. What a great salvation. What a so great a salvation. Father, I thank you for strengthening every person here in their physical body. Those who've been working hard and laboring hard in the kingdom, I ask you to refresh them. Father, I ask you to bless each person standing here spiritually. with the ability to sense your presence, to understand your leading like ne never before. Father, I thank you right now for putting a financial blessing upon those who are going to be just good stewards of that which you supply. Those are going to be the givers to give like you give. Father, we thank you that you made us able. And you've given to us the strength to do those things that you've called us to do. Spiritually, physically, and financially. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that we do not have a cold church. <laughs> the church on fire. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ha, Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. Mandakati kade bakuta kadaya. Satayin meki patuya nasapala. Yera vata meki desi. Yera basu parariya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we bring the sacrifice of praise to you, God. To you, Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise to you, O oh Lord, our God. An offering to you, O oh Lord, our God, a rejoicing, a joy in you, a rejoicing, this joy in you, the sacrifice of praise to you, we bring to you the sacrifice. Revise a praise, a praise, a praise, hallelujah, a praise. Just lift your hands towards heaven now. I just want you to be overwhelmed with the presence of Jesus. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
I want you to be overwhelmed by His goodness. I want you to be overwhelmed by His peace. I want you to be overwhelmed by His divine power and provision in your life. I want you to be overwhelmed with this goodness of God. The goodness of God. <laughs> that from this day forward, wherever you're at, all you have to do is lift your hands towards heaven and suddenly the glory of God comes upon you and overwhelms you. Supplying you with whatever you need for the moment. Whatever you need is provided. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. How are you feeling? Huh? Any back pain? I couldn't do that earlier. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you so much. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, God. God. You are so good. You are so good. To me. to me, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. My, companion. my companion, my teacher, my teacher. And, my guide. and my guide, oh God, oh God. You, are so you are so good to me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, my Christ, my Christ, be glorified in me, be glorified in me, be highly exalted, Lord. Glorified, be glorified, be magnified, be magnified, be high and lifted up, be high and lifted up in this praise, in this praise, be glorified, be glorified. In my body, in my body, in my spirit, in my spirit, which are yours, which are yours. I just saw a disease go out. I just saw a disease go out. A bleeding disease. I just saw a disease. That's why we stand around and worship. That's why we just don't get in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> Fatima, I want you to understand something. You do not have fibrous tumors. You do not have those things. It's, this is the time now that you have to decide what it is that you're going to believe. You have the tumors in your body. Now I command that fear and that torment to leave you alone. I will not abide it. I destroy the work of Satan from off your life. Now I've done this before and you went back to it. But this time you will not go back to it. You live in the freedom that Jesus Christ gives. The Lord doesn't make us do anything. 
We have to choose. We choose. But if we choose Him, He mobilizes all heaven to our defense. Now, Jesus' name. Right through your body. Through your mind. In Jesus' name. I know it's kind of cold in here and a lot of people want to hang out too long. Let's pray for a miracle warm up right now. So we just needed to hang out a little bit longer for Fatima's sake. You saw them on the bottom. Stuart, lift your hands towards heaven. So I know you have to be around a lot of sick kids every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, disease has no power over you. And listen to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, disease has no power over you. you. Walk through the midst of it, not be touched by it, like walking through the fire and not being burned, like walking through the water and not being drowned. In the name of Jesus, listen to me. You do not have to put any effort into this. This is yours. And that flu and infection goes out of your body right now. Jesus' name. Amen. It's a, it's a fact. <laughs> good to have you in the meeting today. We love you very much. It's my honor. Thank you. I love you. That's good. Come over here. Give me a hug. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Everything changes about your life for the better, for the better, for the better, for the better, not for the bitter, for the better. Hallelujah. Everything changes. Everything changes. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. It's my job. I've been empowered to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, before we go, <laughs> we want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. Honor the Lord with your tithes and with your offering. Honor the Lord with your substance. And the Father's promised to bless you so much that your barns cannot hold all that the increase comes and the vats overflow with all the new wine of increase. And so, that means, Father, in the New Testament language, that's Old Testament language, in New Testament language, causes all grace to abound unto you so that you have all sufficiency in all things. So tonight, we want you to participate with us as we go ahead and move forward into a whole new dimension in the things of the Spirit, to see San Diego saved, to see this community Southern California, shake you with the power of God that we know will have an impact across the entire nation of the United States of America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, given that, given that respect, give with that kind of confidence, give with that kind of faith, give with that kind of meaning, give with that kind of purpose. Amen? Amen. And watch what God will do. When faith is in the midst of it, a miracle takes place. Yes. When faith is in the midst of it, you don't have to do it. It's not something that you begrudge doing. It's not something that you're uncertain about, that you're reluctant about, something that you're confident about, something that you're cer certain is the Word of God and the purposes of God for your life. Faith is released and the miracle takes place. Amen. Amen. And then, why are you doing that? As you worship the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, this Lori Smith girl is about ready to be unleashed on, 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 
the people around her. Father, I thank you for this work that has begun here in Lori's life. Now, in Jesus' name, I command an increase. And it's not going to be just a few teachers. It's going to be many teachers. And you're going, to go, you're, you're going to begin to shine with the radiant glow of His presence. You're going to speak, and you're going to discover that it's not you that speaks, but the Holy Ghost speaking through you. Yeah? And you, I, I know you need a place, and now you have one. So, Amen. Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Come worship the Lord with your giving while you're doing it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Josh, amen. Love you, buddy. <laughs>